I actually managed to fly on the Mahanir 747-300. It was really cool actually to fly on the 747 domestic route. It was about $100 to fly in business class on the upper deck of the 747. So finally, I've got some good news. After a horrible year of aircraft retirement, especially to my favorite airplane, Boeing 747. A Boeing 747-300 passenger aircraft has recently back to the sky flying after spending five years in maintenance. Can you believe it? Mahan Air used to operate two 747-300 predominantly on domestic routes inside Iran. On 15 October 2015, one of the 747-300 Mahan Air has, EPMNE, suffered an uncontained engine failure of number three engine during takeoff. The flight was from Tehran to Bandar Abbas. Some part of the engine detached and struck engine number four, as well as damaged the aircraft structure. An emergency landing was declared. And part of the number three engine actually fell during the final approach. The airplane was actually able to return to land safely with 441 passengers and crew on board. After this accident, most of us would assume this airplane would be a write-off. But surprisingly, Mahan Air put this airplane in storage and then went through a heavy maintenance check after five years. It got two new engines transferred from a recently retired sister ship, EPMND. So this 747-300 got a new life, now it's back to flying. This is tremendous great news for 747 fans knowing there are still 747-300 classic airplane flying the sky. So I actually managed to fly on the Mahanir 747-300 back in 2016. It was really cool actually to fly on the 747 domestic routes between Tehran and Mashhad. Uh, this is actually their busiest trunk route domestically in Iran. There are about 40, 50 flights a day on average. The ticket price was quite cheap as a foreigner. We can afford that. It was about $100 to fly in business class on the upper deck of the 747. Quite an experience. But for Iranians, uh, the price was rather high because the Iranian currency has just fallen off the cliff every year due to the increased international sanction. So it's becoming very expensive and difficult for them to fly. Surprisingly, after checking prior to the flight, there was actually a business class lounge at the domestic airport in Mirabad. Uh, the lounge is not bad, I can tell you. There are actually lots of food, lots of snack. I would say it is probably better than a lot of lounges in Europe and the US in the first world countries. And uh, what I like the most is every dish, every coffee cup has a Mahan Air logo on it. It is fantastic for airline collectors. So Mirabai Airport is an old airport in the downtown of Tehran and it only has two air bridges. So most of the aircraft boarding was done by remote gates. So we were bussed out to the remote stand. And um, it's quite a sight on the ramp because they have a lot of interesting aircraft. It's great for AF geek like me, um, you know, go by stairs boarding onto the 747. We had about 300 some passengers, so there were quite a queue to walking up the stair. There's only one stair open at that point to board an aircraft and the 747 just looked massive. The upper deck of Mahan Air 747-300 has 26 recliner seats. There are probably no price to guess where these seats came from. I can tell you this actually came from Lufthansa German airline on their A300, but they do recline to a very deep angle so you feel like you're on a uh, very comfortable armchair. I honestly didn't felt the plane was that old when I get on board. It's actually remodeled inside. Um, the airplane was actually nearly 30 euro at that time I flew, it was 1986, but it seems like they went through a complete remodeling, so uh, it was okay. 
And now there was the pleasant element of paying business class. You get、uh, the menu card, newspaper, welcome drink, hot towers. It's up to the international business class standard for this one-hour domestic flight. So as a traveler, I found many advantages using a VPN, and personally, I use Surfshark VPN to bypass internet censorship, to find cheaper travel deals, and to secure my data. Many travelers would recognize internet censorship is a huge pain. That when you travel, you couldn't connect. To your usual social media platform or your email, so I use Surfshark VPN to connect to another country to access all the content I want. And even better, I can use one subscription on VPN to access to many Netflix library. With the help of Surfshark VPN, there are also good opportunity to find cheaper air tickets, cheaper hotel room, and rental cars by connect to another country. When I'm traveling, I often use free public Wi-Fi at the airport or in the hotel. And we knew that they're not secure, so I use Surfshark VPN to secure and encrypt my data. Now here's the best deal for my viewer: get Surfshark VPN at Surfshark.com/sam. Enter promo code Sam, you will get more than 80% discount and three extra months for free. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. So our flight departed on time, and during the、uh, taxi and takeoff, as a nav geek, our eyes naturally glue out to the window. It was interesting to see there was a sea of aircraft on the ramp.、Uh, there were 727. There were Antonovs. There were、uh, BAE 146. There were a wide range of airplane due to the sanction in Iran. They used whatever they can get hold of. An MD 80 at that time was considered reasonably new. A green hangar in the background while we take off. That's where the 747 Mahaner got、um, maintained in that green hangar. And then you'll see a museum slightly left to the picture coming up on takeoff. And that's where a lots of old airplane like TriStar and 747 Classic were grounded there. Our climb on this airplane was slow and steady. We make a right hand turn and heading towards east to Mashhad.、Uh, the flight was just routine, one hour domestic flight. Mahaner's 747-300s were originally delivered to French Air and UTA. The 747-300 was a minimum change upgrade from the 747-200. So while it was the first jumbo with the extended upper deck, it still had the old-fashioned cabin architecture of the 200 and an analog three-person cockpit, complete with analog gauges. We follow the map. There was no other IFE apart from this uh, uh, fold-down LCD screen.、Uh, the highlight on the flight was the meal was served—a business class lunch, which actually had three choices. I chose the Iranian kebab fillet with rice, which is very tasty, and it came with salad and dessert as well, which is a very reasonable meal for a one-hour flight in business class. So after the meal, I went downstairs to take a look. It was a single whole full deck of economy class. Uh, 434 economy class seats from the nose all the way to the end. Mahaner also have a praying area at the end.、Uh, it seems like they、uh, they do weight and balance, so、uh, the front and the nose was rather empty, and most of the passengers were kept in the middle sections. You can see also inside the airplane bathroom, the、uh, bathroom has been redone.、Uh, there's LED lights on the mirror that was obviously not the、uh, original delivered bathroom. So it seems like Mahaner did a good job, despite of the sanctions, getting airplane parts to maintain these aircraft to keep them flying. Actually, on all Iranian airlines, one thing is they do carry a in-flight marshal,、uh, in-flight security guard, and he usually will sit near the front or on near the cockpit and、uh, read newspaper.、Um, he's actually more senior than the captain. So on that flight, I was joined by other twenty aviation tourists. We're together in Iran to do our、uh, Afghan thing, and the security guard was a little tense to see a、uh, lot of people using cameras, take picture everywhere. So、uh, we didn't manage to visit a cockpit on that flight, which usually they are quite happy to accommodate to、uh, foreigners. 
to show them their kindness, to allow them to have a quick visit. And after that, we started our landing and descent to Mashhad. The weather was overcast, but the 747 made a very smooth landing. I filmed that from the upper deck window. Speaking of 747, Mahanir also currently flies a 747-400 passenger aircraft, which has become increasingly rare as British Airways, Qantas, KLM, Lufthansa, most of the airlines has retired their 747-400 due to the pandemic. Uh, their 747-400 has a similar story, grounded I think 2009, and it sit there and grounded for 10 years. And 2019, it came back from a heavy maintenance check and somehow they managed to found the engine and parts and it's back in the sky flying now. Iran has old planes because of the major diplomatic falling out with the United States that followed the 1979 revolution in Iran. So Iran's vintage fleet flies on, mostly MD-80s imported via Ukraine, which do the majority of domestic flying, and some very old A320s and 737 classics. On busy routes, there is a sizable fleet of old A300 and A310 widebodies, but when nothing else can meet demand, such as Tehran to Mashhad or to Honeymoon Kish Island, Mahane's 747-300s are worth their weight in gold. Now, speaking on the 747 in the round, last year we almost saw another 747-200 back in the sky after spending many years on the ground. They went through a heavy D-check. This was with the Iranian Air Force. Unfortunately, it was very unforgiving. During the uh, engine run, uh, the plane had suffered some failure or you know, jumped the chokes. So uh, the engine had suffered failure and the fuselage had suffered some failure. So you almost spent like six years in maintenance and go straight back to maintenance. I don't know if it will ever fly again. And given the track record on the Mahanir 747-300-400, you might see the 747200 back in the sky as well. It is really sad to see most of the 747 didn't make it through the pandemic and uh, most of them are retired prematurely. But it's also good to see now with the easing, sourcing parts, some of the 747 are kept flying and hopefully they will fly longer. And for those who hasn't flown a 747, there are still chances out there for you.